several months ago, I decided I was going to design and build a clock out of wood. And uh, designing a clock is probably the most technically challenging thing I've ever built. But to build a clock out of wood, let's just say there were some frustrating moments. I learned a lot of things along the way about what to and not to do as far as design. And uh, so I'm going to talk about some of that today as well as how uh, I made the gears and the teeth and some of the things I learned to make that easier. Uh, no matter what, because of the precision required for a clock to run, it's going to be a challenge to build. But hopefully some of these things that you learn from this video will make it so that you're not quite as frustrated as I was. So let's get started. Mistake number one was in the design of the planetary gear. Um, as you saw earlier, it's really loud and that's primarily because we have these gears which are moving uh, pretty fast for a clock. Uh, this is going around at 10 RPMs. Uh, the motor is spinning at 60 RPMs. And um, so with that speed in combination with these gears being pressed against this back wall, that's how it's supported. As you can see the little lock collars there, basically press the gear uh, against this back wall. Uh, that seemed like a good idea when I first designed it, but uh, now I realize that that not only creates a lot of friction, but um, it also makes it really loud. So that's problem number one. I should have created these so that they were suspended and uh, that could that would have simply been a shaft going all the way through with the collar on the back and uh, these would have been strong enough to hold the gears in place. So I didn't really need that back support. Issue number two is the how easy it is to take apart. Um, I was actually thinking a great deal about that when I first designed it but you will have to fine tune it. And because of that, you should design this in such a way that it's uh, easy to take apart. So looking at uh, this gear right here, the shaft that holds these two gears in place are just pressed, it's just pressed in. So initially the hole was really tight, but after taking it off five or six times, uh, now it was really easy for that shaft to slip out. So what I would do in the future is make all of the shafts so that they lock from both sides instead of being press fit. And this way you can push it all the way through, have a collar on the front, a lock collar, and then uh, no matter what, every time you tighten it back up, it would tighten up snugly. So what you see here is the motor that uh, used to lift the window in my van. The cable snapped, but the motor was fine. So I decided at the time I was just starting to design this clock and I thought, hey, this might be uh, interesting to have a uh, relatively high RPM and we're talking about high for a clock, high RPM clock. I could take this and uh, design the clock around the speed of this. So I set it up, I measured it, it was 60 RPM, but uh, after building the whole clock, it actually runs just slightly faster than that and thus my clock is a little fast. So um, it's best to use a fixed RPM motor. This motor comes out of a microwave and it runs at a fixed rate. This is the, uh, the motor that spins the plate and it'll always run exactly six RPMs and that's what you want, a motor that will run at a fixed rate and uh, therefore your clock will be more accurate. So I initially designed the clock around this and then kind of got ambitious and thought, oh, I could do planetary gears. And uh, if I want planetary gears, I need to a, a faster motor. And uh, But it turned out to be um, that I lost some precision because of that. So I will use something like this. And that was a, uh, a microwave I found on the side of the road. So it's not like you got to buy one of these. People are throwing them out all the time. So just stop and grab you one. All right, so a couple things that went well that I really liked. Uh, I like the way the shafts worked out. Uh, these are just solid oak and it turned out to give me a nice little platform for sliding the pieces on and off. 
Uh, initially, I wanted him to be a real tight fit, but again, that didn't work out because you gotta take it on and off. But I ended up loosening the hose a little bit for all of these pieces that this whole piece could slide off and slide back on. And then I decided to add these screws uh, to hold them in place, and that worked out really well. Probably the most helpful tool was this. Uh, this is another thing that went really well, and this is actually uh, custom sandpaper. And you can order this online. And I ordered this for my bandsaw. It's 59 and a half inches long. You can order any grit you want. And you put this in the bandsaw, and then you can sand the tooth of your gear uh, the same way you cut the teeth out. And so what I did is instead of... So I take a gear, and instead of cutting all the way down um, to the tooth, this is uh, these are the cuts I started making about halfway through. Um, I started making this with the bandsaw blade, and then I'll go back and load the sandpaper into the bandsaw and shave these down to the line. And that increased the precision quite a bit, so um, this is by far uh, the most helpful tool in clock making is uh, using sandpaper in your bandsaw or using your bandsaw like a sander. Well, another thing that was really important is uh, using these uh, brad point bits. You don't necessarily need to use this particular brand, but uh, having that pointed tip was really critical. I found that if you miss the center, even by just a tiny bit, even a half a millimeter, uh, your gear, uh, once it goes around, and uh, they'll tighten up and your whole clock will stop. And it's usually because your gear or your uh, axis is not centered. Uh, that was a common problem. And so there were a couple cases where I actually had to remake the whole gear because the axis was off so much that uh, one whole side was really jamming up. All right, so uh, another one is the looking at the thickness. I like using plywood because uh, obviously it's more stable than solid wood and it'll contract and expand less throughout the seasons. Uh, so that's really good. But even more important than that is the thickness of the top layer. So what you're looking at is a sample piece of hardwood flooring. And uh, this is actually what many of the gears are made out of. It's hardwood flooring. And that's primarily because that top layer, as you can see here, is much thicker than what you can buy from like the plywood owl. Uh, so I ended up getting this because it just, it gave me a much thicker top layer and therefore you don't have all of the uh, chip out splintering that you can get. Uh, that looks really terrible. And uh, hardwood flooring worked for me, but of course you can order some stuff online. Just make sure that top layer is nice and thick. Uh, I will probably use this again. And the last one is just take your time. Um, every single time I tried to rush, got impatient, tried to hurry, I screwed something up. And there's nothing worse than cutting out a gear as large as this and then get all the way to the end and chip out one of your teeth and have to make it again. So uh, I would say the further along you get, especially on your large gears or the really tiny ones, it's the same problem. Really tiny gears, really large gears. Absolutely, you gotta take your time.